go back a few years. Um, 1986, I was working in the building society game in Stoke Newington, Hackney in London. Oh, I'm a young guy. And um, in Hackney at the time, we had a enormously multicultural client base, which was just fabulous. And I, you know, it, it, the world was represented, which was fantastic. And a lot of our clients, English was a second language to them, which was just normal. And for a mortgage interview, I would always encourage somebody who didn't speak English in their first language to bring in somebody like a chaperone or somebody who could do a little bit of interpreting, somebody they could trust. Now, if you think about it, that was vulnerable client procedure circa 1986. <laughs> there you go. Shows my age a bit then. 1986, what a great year that was. And I didn't know it was called vulnerable client procedure. I just did that because I thought it was the right thing to do. And obviously they could have somebody interpreting what I talked about, etc. Now, the FTA, of course, come along and they've defined vulnerable clients quite quite deliberately and I think it's a good definition. Um, my, my, my interpretation is um, somebody's got a personal circumstance and because of that personal circumstance they're, they're susceptible to harm if the financial advisor, mortgage advisor doesn't care. That's simply what it is. So somebody's got a circumstance and I'm, I'm not going to go into what they are, There's, it's all been documented before, but somebody has a personal circumstance and um, they're therefore susceptible to harm if the financial advisor doesn't care about that customer. And that's the vulnerable client definition. I think that's a good one too. And it, uh, it opens us up to many things. Now, the consumer duty has taken that now to another level, particularly for mortgage advisors. Now, first of all, um, I'll put down the consumer duty because, um, well, that's the topic, isn't it? Consumer duty, of course, I call it the 12th man like that the 12th principle actually i got the 12th man it's a film isn't it? I think the 12th man the 12th principle they made it another principle they've got 12 principles now the fca and it's the 12th one and we know what that is it's all about uh, making sure people have the right outcomes and that's great and that should we should have done it anyway but anyway the consumer duty has extended the vulnerable client situation here now the first thing is they require you brokers is you've got to have procedures in place you've got to have processes and procedures in place to handle vulnerable clients. Now they say procedures, yeah, let's put it all in there, vulnerable clients. They say procedures and processes because you've got to follow those. You know, you have a process, you have to follow it. It's, it's obvious really, isn't it? So anybody in your business follows the same procedures and it's up to you what you do as a procedure. For me, it was getting a chaperone in for somebody who couldn't speak English. You know, you might want to have various <laughs> more than just that. But we've known that. That's been around for years. And Consumer Duty has made that um, part of the deal to give the customer the, the right outcome, the best possible outcome. You've got to be able to have a procedure in place to deal with vulnerable people and spot them, deal with them, handle them, that sort of thing. But here's the, here's the big one for you. Number two is you also have a duty of care to providers. Now, as a mortgage broker, you have a number of providers that you use. Obviously, lenders come to mind, insurance companies, anybody else that you use to uh, provide the products that you advise on. Now, you have a duty of care to these people under, under vulnerable clients and consumer duty. And um, I was talking to a broker who had an email from the Halifax, great, great bank. Halifax, in fact, that's part of the people I worked for back in 1986. They worked for the Leeds Permanent Building Society, who were gobbled up by the Halifax, so part of that, that crowd, really. A very uh, traditional, strict, and like that. But they sent an email to this broker, and they said to her, look, you know, what we want you to do is four things. <laughs> it wasn't what we'd like to. We demand <laughs> that you do four things. Otherwise, you can't do business with Halifax. That's pretty much how they put it. Number one is we want to see your policy. So whatever your vulnerable client policy, we want to see that and approve it. Hey, that's a bit, a bit heavy, that, isn't it? Number two, we want to, uh, to get involved in training for all your staff. Uh, we want to make sure that you know, the training is right. So you have a procedure, yeah, but what are you doing to train your people on this? We want to see what you're doing with that. We want to see how you're actually putting that policy in, into practice. And this is the Halifax asking, telling the broker they want this. So that's number two. Number three, we want you to share 
any vulnerabilities that you spot in clients that you submit to Halifax as a mortgage case. So if you have a vulnerable client and uh, you, you do a case for them, you, you submit a case to the Halifax, the Halifax want you to tell them at that point what the vulnerabilities are. So they can make a note of that on their database and they can then deal with that accordingly because they'll have a, a process with that one as well. And fourthly, they want you to tell your client to talk to the Halifax directly about their vulnerability so they can talk about what further help they, that person needs moving forward. So when they become a mortgage customer, do they want to have um, you know, uh, leaflets sent in a different language or something like that? So, uh, okay, a couple of things come to mind. Number f there's four things there. First of all, they want to see your policy, see how you've trained the policy. Make sure you, you do do it. Uh, we'll pardon that one. Number, <laughs> number three, they want to share the vulner vulnerabilities of the client at the point of sale. And then they want you to get the client to speak to them directly about their vulnerabilities so they can then handle them better. I think it's great what Halifax has done there. Um, careful they don't take your client away. Um, be careful of that. Halifax will have them as a client. Of course they will. But they're your client, really. So you want to make sure that, you know, that comes across um, in the way that you handle the client. And I, th I think it's a good thing. I think it's a great, great, um, great policy. So you'll probably find other providers will be doing the same thing because they, they won't. They're daft, aren't they? So that's consumer duty, really. And it just makes you think about what we're about. Um, 1996, of course, uh, I was in the building society trade. If you wind forward to 1991, I was um, self-employed at that point. I think I was working for the Prue from, from memory. And um, I know at the time, because I had a mortgage submitted to me, it was a referral from somebody, from, a, from an accountant, I think, or some, some professional. And there was a lady came to see me in my office, and she was desperate for a mortgage. She had three very small children. So I remember because I had a box of um, toys I used to keep in the corner and the kids used to play with the toys whilst you know, we did our mortgage interview. And this lady was in shed to tears. <laughs> she had an abusive ex-husband. And I don't know if, if the husband was ex at that point, but abusive relationship. And she was desperate to find, get a mortgage to buy this house that she'd seen in the town that I worked at, Nap Hill in Woking, Surrey. And... Um, she was in just desperate situation. She'd been turned down by loads of different lenders direct, and I was obviously a mortgage broker, so I could broke the market. And I found her a mortgage with the Birmingham Midshires. Remember that? Great, uh, great. They're part of Halifax, aren't they? Funny, isn't it? It comes around. And um, I, I dealt with her in a different way that I would deal with people normally. I, I made sure she was looked after. I gave her extra care. We had extra meetings to talk it through. Uh, we had shorter meetings because her attention span wasn't as long because she was highly stressed, as you can imagine she was. And I followed it up as well with completion, make sure she's okay, etc., etc. I just kind of had a duty of care to do that. Now, I always remember at the time because my manager of the branch of the estate agency branch I worked at turned around to me at one point. He said, um, he said um, how do you have the patience? He said to me, of those words, how do you have the patience? Because I didn't earn any more money. It was the same commissions, but I just felt it was the right thing to do. And I think that's what vulnerable client procedures is all about. It's about doing the right thing. It's about doing the right thing, not doing things right. Think about that. Because you know, with compliance, we have procedures doing things right. It's doing the right thing. If you've got that built into your DNA as a person, is it part of your culture, part of your, your makeup, then I think you'll build trust of all customers that you meet as well. So uh, that's vulnerable customers or clients and consumer duty. Hope that's been a good update for you. <laughs> Bye on that one.